Coming up, we'll hear from a 700 Club Canada partner ministry about the impact of your generosity and a note from a police officer leads to a new beginning for a former human trafficking victim. Well, welcome to 700 Club Canada Day, and Shauna is back with us, culinary nutritionist and private chef, yes. wish you were mine. Um, what's in your picnic basket today, oh, Shauna? This week we are going on a picnic journey every day, so you don't want to miss that. Right. And later on, I will open this basket. All right, we're keeping it a secret, so you got to wait till the end of the show. Yesterday we did mini quiche, it was so, so yum. Good. Earlier this week we did mini quiche, it was so lovely. And um, I got a question for you, how do you feel loved, or how do you show love oh I show love with food that, <laughs> this is my love language <laughs> food absolutely I cook I cook with so much love that God's love and it I just I love to see people eat the food yes mm -hmm. and you know what I asked her if her kids ever been to McDonald's she said never no not allowed her they're 20 years old <laughs> You know what? It, food is a beautiful way to show love. It is. And we all need to experience love, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, shortly we'll be joined by Rachel Allen from Union Gospel Mission in Vancouver. Uh, that's one of our partnering ministries, Shauna, that we just love their work. She's going to share how the generosity of you, our 700 Club Canada Partners, has made a huge impact there. And we'll also tell you how you can become a partner. But first, take a look at this. On June 8th, the 700 Club Canada partnered with Union Gospel Mission in Vancouver to help feed hope and change lives through Summer Connect. After a two-year hiatus due to the pandemic, community members in the downtown east side were ecstatic to welcome back UGM's ninth Summer Connect event. The event brought together 32 transformative services, giving over 1,300 people access to outreach and recovery services, the CRA, employment opportunities, pet care, bike repair, and more. Thanks to the 700 Club Canada's compassionate sponsorship, community members enjoyed a delicious meal, 76 people filed taxes, 56 individuals got dignifying haircuts, and so much more. Each step taken can help a person on their journey to overcoming homelessness, poverty, and addiction, giving our community renewed hope. Well, it's a privilege to have Rachel Allen with us from Union Gospel Mission. Rachel, welcome to 700 Club Canada. Thank you, it's great to be here. Well, it is a privilege for our ministry to serve with your ministry. Uh, so tell us more mm -hmm. about what happened at this Summer Connect outreach. It looked amazing. And was there maybe a particular story that stood out to you? Absolutely. Well, we were thrilled to bring back our ninth annual Summer Connect event. And as was mentioned, that we had to sadly press pause during due to the pandemic. Um, and we know that these last few years have been hard for everyone, but they've also hit our community quite hard. Um, services here in the downtown east side in Vancouver were constantly in flux during the pandemic. Many of our service providers had to fo were forced to close or scale down or just adjust their hours or availability. And all of this con confusion or uncertainty around what resources were offered made it confusing for folks here in the neighborhood just about where they could access things, what services were even available to them. And so that's why this event, Summer Connect, um, was so beautiful because it was able to streamline that access to these crucial life-changing supports for over 1,300 folks here in our community that came. So it was a one-stop shop where 32 service providers came to set up their booths as intentional resources, providing information about housing, advocacy, employment, income assistance, pet care, and more. And those who stopped by also got uh, some free food and live music and haircuts, as you saw in the I video, and the it. list goes on. Yeah, and just being together at such a joyful community event like this with laughter and food, friends, music, and connection has been so missed in our community. Um, that's just what our community needed, especially these days. Mm -hmm. um, and you asked about a story. So one, yeah. one thing that stood out to me, I had a conversation with an older Indigenous woman named Sylvia, and we got chatting, and she told me, I live alone and I struggle with loneliness and it's also hard for me to afford things. And people are looking for a place where you can connect and UGM's programs are important to not feel lonely. She said Summer Connect is a great place to connect with others, to reach out when you're struggling and get that support. And for me, I think that was impactful because when we think about Summer Connect, what comes to mind usually for me is all those services that people can connect to. But what I often forget is how important the community connection can be especially after the years of the pandemic when we were isolated from each other. And so the power of connection 
especially with this kind of event, even to friends and neighbors and those community service providers, it can't be overstated. Oh, 100%. In fact, I think that's the longing of every single human person is connection, mm -hmm. right? So what a Absolutely. beautiful thing that you have set up. Thanks for sending that video footage too that we could see oh, yeah. and get a glimpse of it. It mm -hmm. allows us to see the connection taking yeah. place. You mentioned the 32 transformative service providers, which we got a glimpse of in, in that video. And that's amazing to see yeah. all of them come together. What do you see as the role then of partnership in mm -hmm. addressing challenges in our society? Yeah, that's a great question. Here at UGM, we believe that we're better together. Yeah. And many of the challenges that people in our community are experiencing, specifically homelessness, poverty, and addiction, require consistent collaboration. These are very nuanced, complex issues. And the fact that we see all three of those increasing right now in the middle of a very challenging housing crisis, an opioid epidemic, just shows that we need to continue to work together to transform individual lives and communities. Um, and so I think here for folks in our community in the middle of all those crises and after living through a global pandemic, having support at their fingertips is needed now more than ever. Um, they're struggling not just to find places to stay, but also with other barriers, like trying to find ID and job opportunities, um, needing help with their taxes and pensions. And we've seen that folks who become homeless or uh, could become homeless often feel lost and discouraged when they're faced with all these overwhelming barriers. Um, and the number of folks that are experiencing homelessness has only increased during the pandemic and now with inflation. And so our community engagement team who organized Summer Connect, their goal is to build strategic partnerships and initiatives to inspire and serve and catalyze change to help the folks in our community build better lives for themselves. And so I see Summer Connect event as a really great example of partnerships where it brought together so many different service providers to eliminate barriers that folks in our community face day after day. Um, yeah, you know what yeah. really, that really stood out to me even I was watching that clip that here mm -hmm. you have haircuts to taking yeah. care of pets to doing taxes for people. These are things that mm -hmm. don't you think most of us take for granted that that Absolutely. other people don't have the same access to, right? Exactly, yeah, and I think that we think that these things, well, we can just go down the street and get our hair cut and whatnot, but for folks in the community, having a dignified haircut can be transformative yeah. for them. Yeah. And we see that at, at Summer Connect, when these resources are right at their fingertips, it can be a game changer yeah. for so many folks that they can make strides in one day that might otherwise take weeks or months. Wow. And we're just so grateful for these partnerships with our service providers here that we can facilitate these transformative connections. Well, well done, Rachel, because I do believe that unity and when people, when organizations and ministries work together mm -hmm. to serve people, we are better Absolutely. together. Tell me, what is Union Gospel Mission looking forward to in the coming year? Well, it's an exciting time right now at UGM and looking forward to a few key things on the horizon. So one is continuing to grow and expand our new Women and Family Center. So we just built, in this last year, a purpose-built new center for women and their families. It just opened this year, and it creates a space for women to heal and grow, and often sowing seeds for them um, that, that are needed to change the trajectory of not only their lives, but their families for generations. Wow. And it's a place where women and their children have a safe place to thrive and grow. Um, and it follows our continuum of care that our UGM programs have that offers comprehensive programs like outreach, meals, preventative family programs like child care and youth care, stabilization, alcohol and drug recovery, aftercare, employment and education, and even housing and child care. And so we're really thrilled for these programs to continue to grow, um, specifically as more women and their children join us. And so for us, there's the three, the few key stages of stabilization for women who are either finished detox, going into recovery, or finished recovery and are looking for housing, yeah. can come 24 seven wraparound support. We have recovery programs, aftercare for women to integrate back into society, and then our tr transitional housing and daycare. And we're really wow. looking forward to uh, growing those what a beautiful holistic approach. Thank you for your ministry. And here's the exciting part. Viewers, you can be part of that. All you have to do is Absolutely. partner with 700 Club Canada. Go to 700club.ca for more information on Union Gospel Mission. We've been longtime partners. And let's do this together. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you so much. And now this is how Kim was lured into and ultimately escaped the human trafficking industry.
Growing up, Kim just wanted to know she was valued and loved by someone. But her father wasn't around, and life at home with her mother was unstable. By the time she started sixth grade, she had endured years of sexual abuse from two male relatives. I was just in a lot of pain and not getting the help that I needed. So I then started acting out. I started getting in trouble. I started doing drugs. And the next thing you know, I was selling drugs. There was a big hole in my heart. I wanted to be loved by a man. I wanted that father's attention. Um, but it was even more devastating to me, I think, to know that I had a mother, um, but she chose to not be a mother. Kim got pregnant at 16 and relied on a relative to help raise her daughter. Meanwhile, she met a man who seemed to say all the right things, but she had stepped into a trap for human trafficking. One of the first things that he commented to me was, you are beautiful. Those were three words that I had never heard my entire life from people that were supposed to love me. And so it literally only took the three words to draw me in closer to him. The man groomed her for three weeks, buying her nice things and making promises. Kim thought they were leaving for a vacation when the man she called her boyfriend took her to a different state and forced her to work in a strip club. The trafficker threatened Kim and told her not to contact her daughter, who was still in a relative's custody. He began to tell me things like, no one is looking for you, no one loves you, you have nowhere to go. If you go back home, I know exactly where you're gonna be at and I'm gonna find you and I'll kill you. I began to feel that he's right and this is my new life and I just better accept it. My trafficker, he branded me, it was his name, and I had to look at that for many years. By 25, Kim had been sold to five different pimps across several states. Eventually, she was able to escape. When we were driving, he like jumped across pretty much to the back seat and he was beating me senselessly. He like threw me out. And so I figured, you know what? Either I'm gonna try to run and live today or today he's gonna kill me and I'm gonna die. I mustered up this courage and I started running and I ended up hitchhiking. She got her daughter back then she became involved with a drug dealer and had a second daughter with him. Kim thought about her life and wanted more for her two girls. She ended the relationship and took her children with her. I had told him, like, I, I can't do this anymore, this drug life. I just knew that I had two daughters and I needed to be around for them, not in a federal prison. And so that's what gave me the courage to leave. But when her ex came back to her new place causing trouble, she called the police. Once her report was complete, the officer gave her a card. Written on the back was the name of a church. Broken and looking for hope, Kim decided to attend Sunday service. I remember when I came, they were in the DNA series. And it was all about identity, who you are in Christ. If your mother and father leave you and you're abandoned, how the Lord adopts you into his family, you are loved, you are valuable, you are accepted. They were talking about this love, a love that I had never known, but I had wanted. Kim began studying the Bible and kept coming back to church each Sunday. Then she opened her heart to receive God's love. She said the salvation prayer and was baptized. Jesus made it real to me through his word. He'd spoke to me that day and he'd said, you know, you are free, you are clean, you are forgiven. As Kim embraced her true identity in Jesus, she says her life was transformed. She began to heal from her painful past. What he did for me was he sent people into my life to show me his love. He would bring these motherly figures into my life that would love me and um, allow me to know what a healthy real love looks like, what a mother's love looks like. I can be that for my girls. I can give them the love, the affection, the attention. Um, and I can have the beautiful relationship and watch them blossom into these beautiful young women. Kim says when she realized God's unconditional love, she found her true identity and freedom. Today, she treasures spending time with her daughters and is an advocate for human trafficking victims. Now I know that my story has a purpose. So I went through all of what I went through so that he could use me to glorify his kingdom. God is our healer. 
Um, he's, in, he's no respecters of persons. What he did for me, he'll do for another. It's just all about surrender in the heart. I remember the first time we were getting ready to go and my sister and I are all dressed up, we're all bundled up the best a single father can do at the time and we're sitting waiting for the social worker to bring us to our next parents and we're just, you know, our legs barely hanging over, you know, and just sort of waving back and forth and we're waiting to see in a sense who our next family uh, would be. I remember one particular home uh, running through the forest saying, you know, does anybody love me, does anybody care? And I, I really thought that love was only for the special people. Because at that point, I, I didn't feel special. I still remember just feeling like you're all alone. And, uh, and no one's really there. I was lost. And I had to be found again. I have this one image of my mom, and it's one of the very few uh, that I have of her. Uh, she's, she's pulling my sister and I on a sled, and so I must be about two and a half, three, and that's probably the only good image I have of my mom. She took off and uh, um, left my dad behind. He was a simple guy, dutiful, and so when my mom left, um, he had two little kids, didn't know what to do with them. I think we were in total about a seven different foster homes. Sometimes we're in a home for a month, sometimes with three months, and sometimes more. Um, one, um, my, my sister and I were separated. A couple homes we were um, abused in different ways, and uh, you know, physically and, and emotionally. The pain uh, was very raw. The emotions were always there. The, the, re the feelings of rejection, the, the feelings that um, you didn't matter, you didn't count. I, I remember there was one particular uh, Christmas. I was told that my mom was coming, and you know, I was thrilled. It's probably been about four years since I'd seen my mom. I was probably about six or seven at the time, and I was excited, you know? Was, and, and when you think of it for a moment, I'm, I'm excited that I get to see my mom, you know? All I can pull from my tickle trunk is this image of my mom pulling my sleigh, this petite woman, and you know, and of course as a kid, the most beautiful woman in the world. And I thought, wow, I mean, I wonder what a mom looks like. All of a sudden I hear, I, I hear this, Derek, 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 and I come running to the door. Well, this lady who stood before me didn't look anything like my mom. I couldn't make any correlation at all. And then she said, this is your mom. And I think that would be one point in my life where if you could hear a heartbreak, that would be it. It was like all the images I had. I got to see my mom, but this wasn't the mom I had. That was a hard time because I had a, a, now a stepfather who didn't really like boys. Um, and unfortunately, you know, in some ways, uh, uh, like girls too much. And so uh, we, we had that hardship taking place in our own family. And so my mom became a, a real alcoholic, had gained a lot of weight, and so we moved. And so it was a hard time. It was a hard time. I took a rope. I hung it in my room, and I was tired of being laughed at. I, I just couldn't deal with the rejection anymore. I couldn't deal with the beatings. I have, I have two scars here where my friends took my face and decorated the back of a bus with it. I wanted to give up, and I hung the rope up thinking that was the solution. And I remember staring at it. It was seemed like forever, and I looked at it, and I got closer and closer and closer, and then I broke down and really cried for hours. And I remember, I can't even do this. And I stopped and I looked at the ceiling and I said, God, you're my last chance. God spoke into my heart and he said, you know, Derek, I'm not your last chance. I'm your only chance. When you discover love, uh, when you discover hope, uh, your life totally changes. 
And, and for me, all of a sudden, it was like this immediate calling. And I just remember this feeling that I want to make a difference in someone's life because there's something about feeling like that you have no, no place to go, no direction. And then when you find it, it channels you. There's something about walking in hope and knowing that no matter how bad things get, there's someone who's got your back. The call was strong to work with kids just like me. And so I got involved with a Youth for Christ at the time in Montreal. I was engaged when I was 17. At 19, we were married and we dedicated our summers always to, uh, to ministries. We're always involved in ministry. If I could be brave enough to let people know that my story may link to their story, and that becomes a link to tell about his story. And, and I've realized that we all give him stories and we all have tough times, but I've begun living everlasting life. Uh, I, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ and sometimes it's tough and sometimes I cannot control the relationships around me. I can really only dedicate myself and my purpose is Christ. All you can do is really trust. And sometimes like the little kid just holding on to the father's hand saying, you know what? I'm just gonna hold your hand. Uh, for me, uh, discovering love again is I realize God is love. And when you know what love is, it's easy to rebuild. Well, you heard earlier today about Union Gospel Mission and the impact they're having out in the Vancouver area. And you, when you partner with 700 Club Canada, we together get to be part of that. So it's just a great uh, way to do ministry. We believe in partnership and it can start for you at $20 a month. And an easy way to give is use Pledge Express. This way will automatically withdraw your uh, gift from your bank account. It saves on admin fees and ultimately it puts more money in the hands of those who need it most. So why don't you start with us today and as a thank you gift for becoming a monthly partner, you'll receive our latest CD, Putting on the Armor of God. It's a great CD to equip you in the realm of spiritual warfare and prayer. So call us today, 1-855-759-0700. CBN presents Putting on the Armor of God, a brand new audio recording by Pat Robertson. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Find the wisdom you need to win the spiritual battles and live life victoriously. Putting on the Armor of God, available now. Call or go online today. It's picnic basket time with Shauna Leinster, our private chef and culinary nutritionist. I want to know what's in the picnic I basket. I brought my very favorite picnic basket. It's a classic wicker basket. It's <laughs> gorgeous. It and wow. It's so, so if you're going to go on a picnic, like, why not go in style? Go right? in style. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. I want to know what we're going to eat. Yes. What so we're going to put with, eat with those beautiful what dishes. What we're taking along on our picnic with us is a mango chickpea potato salad. It has wow. some nice Southeast Indian flavors. And these are all the beautiful, colorful ingredients. We're gonna make it together. Okay, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> so I have uh, baby potatoes here that I parboiled, some chickpeas. Chickpeas are a great source of protein, high in fiber. I have some chopped red onion mm. and green chili. Oh, green I'm smelling chili. them. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. The green chili, it, it, you don't have to use it if you're heat sensitive, but it just adds a little punch, a little extra flavor. Pomegranates, these are the pomegranate aerials. Uh, they're so high in antioxidants. Yeah, and they're so and pretty. fiber, and they're beautiful. Just another, it's like a rainbow salad. Right? Yeah, exactly. We got the green, the purple, the red, and the potato. <laughs> and some fresh mint and coriander. Mm. Coriander Mint and name coriander. For why why mm. do you combine the two together? Well, they're classic Indian flavors. Okay. They're quintessential for a lot of Southeast Indian uh, foods. And then the dressing I have here, I use sugar free mayo. Anywhere to take out sugar yeah. for me is, uh, is definitely a plus. Okay. Mix that with mango chutney, which you can find in the ethnic aisle of your grocery store. Turmeric, garam masala, salt and pepper. Wow. And that is your dressing. Do you want to give that a little yes, mix there, Yes, absolutely. Lori? Perfect. And so, then to finish it with some fresh lime, just to brighten everything up. 
Well, and the lime with the coriander, the mint, it really is, uh, that's the... I don't want to get you. Splash, well, I literally got splash. <laughs> splash of flavor, right? Exactly. And the, the lime brightens everything together. It just marries yeah. all the flavors together. Oh, yum. And Beautiful. this tastes better the next day. So I actually have a pre-made salad there that we're going to try okay. together. Look at how easy that <laughs> and is. Then you're done. See, even I can do it. <laughs> and you put it in your picnic basket and you're good to go. <laughs> so potato salad happens to be one of my favorite things. Me too. Is there alternatives then that's similar but different if you want a different seasoning? Maybe you're not into, you know, the Indian flavors. Absolutely. I love a classic herb potato salad. Potato and tarragon go really nice together mm. or dill as well. Yes. And if you don't like the heavy uh, mayo dressing, you can do a light vinaigrette right, as well. Right. Even some lemon and lime juice, a bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. You're good to go. See, she just knows how to throw it all <laughs> together. But, uh, you know, do you have a favorite picnic spot? Well, like uh, we are very blessed. We live right by Lake Ontario. Oh, nice. We're about a five minute drive from the lake. So, nice. and there are parks everywhere. So we, we love picnicking in the summer. Yeah. And my son recently for his seventh birthday, he just got a fishing rod. Oh, nice. So we're going to be doing a lot of fishing this summer while we picnic. You know what? And you have such a classy picnic basket that, you know, yeah. who, who, you can't go wrong. In Canada, <laughs> there's places to fish and to have picnics everywhere, it's right? It's so great. It's one thing about our, beautiful about our nation. Absolutely. Well, I love this. What's the nutritional value in eating something like this? Because I think potato starch, you know, is this right, really... Right, Well, you know what? Potatoes kind of get a bad rep. They actually have a lot of vitamins and minerals. They're very high in vitamin C. They are starchy. Okay. And, and, you know, if you want to switch out for even um, a Japanese sweet potato, they're oh. the ones with the purple skin and the white yeah. flesh. That would look pretty. They're very beautiful. Yeah. So they still have the same texture as a white potato, but a little more uh, nutritional, uh, nutritional in that way. Mm -hmm. And the chickpeas is really what I wanted to focus on. High in yeah. fiber, high in protein. It's, this, is a, it. this is like a, a lunch in a bowl. It you know? is, and it's beautiful, <laughs> and it smells beautiful. Now, I definitely want to have a taste of it. Please do. Would you ever use a sweet potato to do a potato salad, or would it go too mushy? You can, you but know? just don't cook it all the way through. Oh, okay. So it still has that firm texture. Oh, my. Would you like some? I would love some. Can I some. serve you Absolutely. as well? Thank you so much. You know, much. this is an instant meal in a bowl. Exactly. I can't believe it. And like you said, the flavors sitting overnight are going to be that much better. Exactly. Yes. How long would you keep that in your fridge? That would last about three days. Oh, yeah. nice. But it probably won't because it's so good. Yeah. Everyone will eat it. Because <laughs> we're eating it all up. If you want, I'm going to taste this, but if you want this recipe, all the recipes this week, go to 700club.ca. They're all there for you to download or go to social media, our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. at 700 Club Canada, and you'll see all the info right there. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready to <laughs> mouth this down. Mmm. Oh my. Oh, so okay. Good. There's so much flavor in that. It's like a burst of flavor in your mouth. Yeah. Sweet, tangy, amazing, <laughs> amazing. Thank you so much, Shauna. You're so welcome. So fun. Join us tomorrow for more. Thanks for watching. To contact us, visit 700club.ca. Tomorrow on the 700 Club Canada, prayer leads to a miracle survival. And two weeks after dying in a parking lot, Prayer helps a man go home.